Hello, my creative critters, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the sketches that I did when I went to the Shed Aquarium a few months ago, and I'm going to give you a little montage of the different videos that I took of all the animals and fish that I do plan to use as references in future drawings. So like I said, I will have like a montage of all the videos I took just as a time capsule memory compilation for me, but also to show you all the cool animals that are at the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. Chicago. So without further ado, let's get right into what I sketched while I was there. So to get to the Shed Aquarium, I took the train and while I was on the train, I drew some of the people and the passengers and my shoe, and like the back of some people's heads. So I guess I'll start by talking about this man right here. This guy, God bless him. I was on the platform ready to get onto the train and I was just making sure that I had everything that I needed, made sure I had my wallet, my phone, my ID, all that good stuff before I got on the train. And this man, this man right here, as I was panicking, looking through my purse, because I just figured maybe I put it in a weird pocket or something and I just couldn't find it. This guy comes up the stairs right before the train is about to approach the next few minutes or so. He's like, does anyone lose their wallet? And it was my wallet and I was so thankful for him. So thank you, thank you, sir, for being a good Samaritan and helping me out with that. I did end up sitting kind of behind him in the same car, so I figured I'd just draw him because why not? This guy here was, I think, a seat in front of me on the train. This person was like on the opposite row of seats, like farther up. This was just a quick study. I think it goes this way. Quick study of like the ticket holder thing on it just because it was there and I was bored. And then this is my shoe. I got some new shoes around this time and, and they're like black Converse type shoes. And they had zippers on the sides, which I love. They have a bit of a platform, but not too much. But I love these shoes. And I think I was probably frustrated with people looking around and moving around so much that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to draw my foot <laughs> because it's there and I have control whether it moves or not. And same with this person here. He was constantly either looking down at his phone or like out the window. So when he was looking out the window, I would like kind of start sketching this part. And then when he would look down at his phone, I would stop this one, start this one and kind of work on that. And then when he looked out the window again, I'd continue on this drawing and that's kind of how I why I did those two rather than stressing out or like just waiting for him to turn his head in the exact way that I wanted him to I kind of just had two drawings going on at the same time just to keep me busy it's like a 45 minute train ride or so so anyway that's all I have really for the train ride um, let's move on to the next page where we have some animals so on this page is basically all I did at the Shed Aquarium as far as drawing goes. I was really enjoying watching the animals and as you'll see I did take a lot of videos and a lot of pictures so that compilation will be coming up right after this but I just want to talk about some of the drawings that I did here. All of these were just in ballpoint pen that I brought because I didn't want to have too much on me while I was there. If I wanted to like do it in pencil and like color and stuff that's just way more supplies that I didn't really want to bring with me. I try to pack light when I go to the city but whenever I go to the shed I always start with the fish and kind of walk around tank by tank to see what kind of fish they are, maybe learn a little something about them. But I started with this guy here. I might have a photo of him, I'm not sure, but if so, I will pop an image here for you to see. And then I guess his name was a Gramis, giant Garami. I don't really know, but his face was kind of funny and derpy, so I wanted to draw him. Then I think this was a Piranha Gar Gary's Violet Lime Piranha. Oh yeah, these were the ones that have like like a really purpley line down like their face, in the middle of their face. So I thought that was pretty interesting and I love the color purple, so I had to draw it. I love the hump head glass fish. Let me zoom in a little. I love these fish because they're so, they're just so funny. They have like this giant bulge on their head and I just think it's super like quirky, cute in a weird way. I don't know, but I, I had to draw one, so there we go. And I believe this might've been the same fish. If not, maybe a different fish, but I don't know. I did not label it. <laughs> and then here's a paddlefish. I really enjoyed watching these guys swim around with their mouths open. I thought it was really cool. And especially when you get the view of them like going straight at you, their mouths, you can see like the slits of their gills. And I just thought it was really interesting. And once I do the compilation in this video, you'll see probably some footage of them and you can see what I mean, how they have like such a flat 
paddle, if you will, kind of snouts, and then their like mouth opens up so they can like filter food or whatever um, by just swimming around. And then at the Shed Aquarium, I love to draw the alligators because they don't move and they're easy to draw as far as like they're not moving around so much. So it's easier to draw them when they're stationary. And these guys were pretty still. So, and if I have an image or something of them, I will definitely have it over here so you can see. Um, otherwise it'll be in the compilation too. And then over here we have the leafy sea dragon. I could watch these guys all day. They're so pretty. They're so like elegant and just really fascinating and detailed and dainty looking. And the way that just, they kind of just float around. It's so, it's kind of pretty to be honest. And there were a bunch of them in one tank. So I was able to get this drawing down of one of them. And while I was at the Shed Aquarium, what I like to do, since this sketchbook is kind of large, let me zoom out. So the sketchbook is kind of large. It's like nine by 12, I think. Let me see. Yeah, it's a nine by 12 inch sketchbook. So what I like to do when I'm carrying it around is kind of draw on the top of it so that I'm not like drawing all the way down here. Just it's more comfortable to draw around here and have the rest of the sketchbook like lower, you know? And during this trip, I kind of like spun it around this way to draw a little bit more. And then by the end, I was like over here drawing. So that's kind of how I like to use the sketchbook because it is quite large. So that's why there's like a random space here. I guess I didn't get a chance to draw much here. And to be honest, towards the end of walking through everything, I was a little bit tired. So I kind of stopped drawing after like the sea lion here and just kind of absorbed the rest of the animals, took lots of videos and you'll see like footage of dolphins and sea otters and a lot of really cute videos that I was able to capture. And like I said, I'll show you guys that in just a minute. But last but not least, I sketched this adorable sea lion let me zoom in zoom in i should say and he was just so cute he was like a big potato log squishy thing <laughs> it was really hard to see or like distinguish where his head ended and where his body began because it was just like a blob and i think i have a photo of it so if i do find it i will put an image here of what i mean it was very challenging to draw because like like i said it was just like a straight line and lots of foreshortening so I tried to get it on this page it was probably a little inaccurate because I was working with this page and I tend to kind of try and fit things when they aren't necessarily anatomically correct I try and get them on my sketchbook anyway which is not the best habit but he was just literally laying down I think he was sleeping or napping and I found it really interesting the way that he would like open his eyes and then like shut it. I don't know why I found it. Let me see if I can find a video of it and I will pop it here if I find something, but it was like weird maybe? I, I just remember being fascinated when it would like open its eyes and then close it. It was like a weird, it was like bulgy. I, I don't know, his eyes were like bulgy. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I'll put an image if I find one. So that concludes the sketches that I did at the shed this past couple months ago. I know it's been a while since then, but I still wanted to show you guys what I did because I love going out, taking myself on a little date to go put myself in front of animals and draw them live. I also went with my friend Faith and it was really fun to catch up with her and walk around and see some animals. She is also an animal artist and she does a lot of really fun pet caricatures. So I will have all of her information and social media linked below too if you want to check her out. But I'm gonna quit chatting and let's get on to the videos of animals. A couple notable ones that I want to actually talk about before I just kind of dump them all here with some music in the background is we found a pineapple fish and I will pop a video here of them and I just thought they were so cool because they looked like little pineapples the patterning that they had on their body they looked like little pineapple chunks if you know what I mean I, I don't know you'll see what I mean when I pop an image here you'll see it but Faith and I just thought it was such a cute and like strangely accurate name for this fish Another really fun, notable little moment that I was able to capture on video was the sea otters playing around in this like donut inflatable inner tube type thing in their enclosure. I just thought it was so cute watching them kind of spin around in it and everything. And the sea otters are also just so fun to watch in general. So I'm glad I was able to capture some footage of them. And I think the majority of the videos that I was taking 
was just watching the dolphins kind of do their thing and swim around and every time they would come by I would try to take a video of them and I think Faith and I spent like the most of our time just watching the Pacific white-sided dolphins doing their thing gliding around and I believe there was a baby Pacific white-sided dolphin as well that was kind of swimming around the mama I don't think the baby was like a newborn because it was only slightly smaller than the mother but that was always a treat to see them swim by the glass and there was just so much viewing area to see these dolphins swim underwater that every time Faith and I were like okay now we're gonna move on to the next animal we watched the dolphins for long enough we would kind of walk forward again and there was just it just the glass to see the dolphins just kept continuing on so we would like stop again and then we'd be like okay no more dolphins let's move on then we walk a little bit farther and then we get like a different angle of them doing tricks and stuff so we stop and watch again so needless to say we spent a lot of time watching the dolphins and it was just so mesmerizing and kind of peaceful to watch them so we both really enjoyed sticking around the dolphins to watch them do their thing it was also really fun watching the beluga whales it's always a treat watching the beluga whales and just how sweet and innocent their faces look I did take a lot of videos of them too I also want to talk about this cute interaction that I saw between a couple seahorses where one of them kind of looped their tail around another one's tail while the other one swam away and just dragged the other one along. I just thought it was such a sweet, adorable, cute little interaction that I was able to capture. So I had to share it with you guys. And I think in part one where I drew digitally from these videos that I took, I briefly talked about it, but here's the actual video if you didn't see that one. I also just couldn't stop taking videos of the jellyfish they're just so calming and beautiful to watch and it was so hard to not take a good video or photo of them because they're just so organic and fluffy squishy looking and it was just really fun to watch them just be jellyfish in the water also at the Shedd Aquarium, the lighting on the jellyfish is really interesting. And I felt like every video that I took of the jellyfish might as well have been like a screensaver. It was so pretty. So for right now, this is all I can really remember to specifically talk about in the videos that I captured at the Shedd Aquarium when I took this trip a few months ago. But for now, I'm going to shut up and let you guys enjoy the rest of the footage that I took of all the amazing creatures and fish that I was able to observe while I was at the Shedd Aquarium. And I will meet you back here at the end of it for some final thoughts.
So I hope you guys are enjoying watching the clips that I took at the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. Make sure if you made it here and you like this video, don't forget to leave this video a like. It really helps me out and helps the YouTube gods show my videos to more people. I have a goal of reaching 300 subscribers by the end of 2022, and I think we only need about 20 or so people. So if you have friends that like art and animals, or if you like art and animals, feel free to check out my channel, see if what I do is what you like, and and if you want to stick around, click the subscribe button because I would love to have you here. I know a lot of content creators on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and so on. They're like waiting for that one video that'll go viral. And maybe someday that'll happen for me. But in the meantime, I really enjoy building my audience one subscriber at a time. So if you're here, thanks for sticking around till the end of this video. It not only helps me out, but it means a lot because it does take time to edit these videos. And I love sharing my passion for animals through my other passion art. And I hope you will too. If you made it this far, also leave me a comment and let me know any animals that you want to learn more about. Out because I want to start doing my fun fact Friday videos again where I focus on an animal or create an animal hybrid where I talk about two animals in a video and kind of design a hybrid of those two animals so leave me animal suggestions in the comments I take suggestions all the time so don't be shy thank you guys so much for watching stay creative and I will see you in next Friday's video bye